sure everybody can hear you. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Noel Walsh, and I'm with Varsity Ford in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I'm also with NWNA Conquer and Chase Sales Training. So, like my good friend uh, Jonathan Dawson said here, uh, 16 months ago, we moved from Ann Arbor, Michigan. My wife was sick of the cold, and I was missing the mountains to St. George, Utah. So, I got the mountains, my wife got the weather. We just packed up and left. We had three houses, the house we moved into, a rental house that was empty, and our house that we had to sell in Ann Arbor. Gunslinger, hashtag gunslinger. So I did what people would drive most people crazy, but I'm a doer and I knew I would get it done. Went back to Michigan, got the house sold, got the rental filled, kept selling cars. Told the dealership what I was doing because I just packed up and left, didn't tell anybody anything, you know the car business. I'm leaving it two weeks, they're like, no, you can go now. Um, they said, do this as long as you want, stay as long as you want. So one thing I had to do is they believed in me, so I had to keep producing. So I would take the first two weeks of the month off, go with my family, live our dreams, go camp, go hike, go horseback riding, all the things we want to do, and I'd come back and just hit it hard. Obviously with my smartphone, my tablet, email, I was able to stay in contact with customers. Hey, you're going to be in tonight, you're going to be in tomorrow, you're going to be in this, you want to stop in on Saturday? Actually, guys, I'm off for the week. I'll be in next Monday. How's 3 o'clock sound? I built a big relationship with my customers. When they came in, one of the first questions I'd ask, who is the vehicle for? First thing. What's the first thing that women say when they come into a dealership? They get no attention. You know, they're, they're left out. The husband, the guy talks to the husband the whole time. Hey, sir, what are you looking for? Well, my wife wants a white minivan. What kind of features do you want your white minivan? I'd go right to who the buyer was for. I would also get the kids involved. Because if the kids aren't involved, the kids don't want to deal with the, the whole process. It's boring at the dealership. They've got a five minute um, until they get you know, wore out. Get the kids involved, get everybody involved, slow them down and bring them to my desk. I'd give them, like Jonathan talked about, a great demonstration. So you're here for a family vehicle. So Jonathan takes it a step further. If they're looking for a family vehicle, they're looking for space, something that accommodates their family, and safety. First thing I'll do is I'll take the buyer, the mother. Take the buyer, show all the safety features, show her how everything works, uh, show her what I feel would be most important while asking questions, while interviewing her on what's important. Um, I was able to do that through building a relationship. When I look at the cars I've sold, I've sold most of the people that I sell five, seven, eight, nine vehicles. I'm at the point now I only work with referrals and repeat customers because I don't want to go through the games. I've got a reputation. They come in to see me. They know about the Noel Wall Show. So I built that through actively listening and caring about the customers. When you care about people, no matter how intelligent you think they are or how unintelligent you think they aren't, when you listen to the customers and you really have a care for their need, and you accommodate that need, it's like Walt Disney said, when you do something great, people will want to come back and see it. And then they'll want to bring their friends to see what you do so great. So I had my process down by being great at what I did, by listening and actively giving them what they wanted. It's all about the customer in this business. You hear all the cliches, but in this business, it's all about giving the customers what they want and utilizing their time. I have one of the quickest processes. Five questions, I can know exactly what vehicle they're gonna to wanna to look at. Now, I'm in a store with 2,000 vehicles, so it's hard to go out and show them, let's go look at the 389 Fusions that we have. Only 121 are blue like you like. I'll get on, feel them out, know my programs, and I'll walk them through the process, pull up the vehicle, like Jonathan said, I'm always a big fan of butterflying it, um, getting the kids involved. Hey, little Johnny, you like this color blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sally, what do you like best about this vehicle? I like the trunk. I want to ride in the trunk. Well, I don't think mom and dad will let you, but I bet at times they would want you to. But they'll get in trouble. <laughs> You're going to want to keep mom and dad around. You need them. Um, but basically, I went out. I lived by the mantra, conquer what you chase. I lived out to conquer my dreams and do what I wanted to. And I was able to do that by taking care of my customers. If you take care of people, people will take care of you. And it's all like the circle of life. The more you give, the more you get. 
when you really truly care about people, they will really truly care about you. They want you to be successful. They don't want that invoice price. They want you to give them a good value that's a fair price, but they're willing to pay for the skills that you have. So sales is all about building that relationship, creating the value, and then delivering on what you say you're gonna do. When they call and it's first thing in the morning and they need a service loaner, get on top of it. Call people back. People wanna be called back. They wanna feel like you care. It doesn't matter. I used to tell people when they come in and they're standoffish, and I'm like, listen folks, I don't wanna sell you one car. I wanna sell you 10 cars. And I wanna sell everybody you know 10 cars too. One car doesn't matter to me. That's nothing. I wanna earn your business for life, and I'm here to show you that I'm gonna make the process so smooth and simple that you're gonna to wanna to come back and see me. And people would come in to see me, and they would look at me like I was a celebrity. And there was no greater feeling for your confidence. They're like, you're, you're Noah Walsh? You know, they look at me and they're like, you're Noah Walsh? That's the feeling you need to create. Be the professional you know you can be. Keep investing in yourself to learn to grow better. Give the customer what they want and show them how you're the professional that takes the pain out of the process. Most of what Jonathan's been talking about today is, is the pain in the process. That's what customers hate. They aren't professional buyers. I've sold 3,000 cars. Some of you have sold more. They bought five or 10. Their last eight experiences were probably horrible. Every time the wife goes in, she can't get any attention. It's always to the husband. And unfortunately, sometimes husbands are guilty of this because you're talking to the wife and then he keeps asking you questions. And I'll stop him sometimes. But, John, I'm listening to Judy right now, but in a minute, I'll get back to your question. Now she's, you've got that car sold. You, you own her. You got little Johnny and little Judy. You've got them engaged. They love you. Mom and Dad, if you want to go back and see the car guy, he's fun. He gives us coloring books. He says funny stuff. He always gives us high fives. But I went to secret shopping yesterday with uh, a partner of mine. And we went to four dealerships. And I can tell you the worst thing was of every dealership, nobody came up and introduced themselves with a nice handshake and eye contact. Eye contact and the first handshake are your first tools for success. Look people deep in the eye like you're looking into their soul and shake their hand with a firm handshake. Tell them your full name. And then from there, meet the rest of the party. And I don't care if they've got 12 kids. I live in Utah, so there's nothing new there. Uh, I don't care if they've got 12 kids. Get every child involved in the process. Make it a family affair. Make it fun and keep everybody engaged. Yeah, fantastic everybody, this is Noel Walsh. <laughs> what I'd like to do real quick is I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions real quick that, that you guys might want to ask, and then I'll give you guys a chance to ask questions. So so real quick, Noel, you can yeah, this one. Alright, so first question is this. So how many total months were you doing the where you were back and forth? 16 months. 16 months. Okay, so for 16 months, your entire livelihood was only based on half of a month. Correct. Okay. So in that course of 16 months, what what did you sustain as a business in 16 months? Like, did the dealership keep you on because you were selling like you know six cars a month? They're all repeats. Or what, what was your business looking like? I was still doing 15 to 20, uh, 25 a month, and I was I carried 80 percent of my yearly income also. So you retained 80 percent of your income working half the time. 25 weeks this year, 80 percent. It worked 25 weeks of the year and kept 80% of his money. Anybody in on that program? <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So, so what I'd like to do real quick for you guys, just to give you some context, if you had a guy who sells 20 cars a month, working two weeks a month, and does that off repeat and referral, what is a question you would like to ask that guy? Let me see the hand. Who's got a question for him? Dylan? What was your biggest marketing strategy as far as getting here? Biggest marketing strategy is a lot of what Jonathan said. I'm big on snail mail. Um, always give a follow-up card. Whenever they come in for service, I have little three by five postcards. Hey, I saw you're in for service. I know they do a great job. I hope they took care of you. If you have any questions, please let me know. And by the way, if you or anybody you know is in the market, please pass my name along. I'm giving the same professional service I've always given you. Write it the same way every time. I don't care if they're in three times in the same week. I write it the same way every time. Uh, thanks for stopping in and not buying cars, follow-up calls, birthday cards, 
Christmas cards. In fact, one year we did a family picture and I did a uh, picture, a Christmas card, I did like 2,000 of them with the family on it. And, and we're Christians, and I don't, you know, it's not PC, but we say Merry Christmas. And if you don't believe in Christmas, and that's awesome. I'm, I'm happy you're passionate about your holiday, but that's what we're passionate about. So I said Merry Christmas. I still get people to this day, I did that three years ago, and then we do uh, Christmas cards as a dealership. I still get people that are like, wow, thank you so much for that Christmas card, because it made them feel like they're part of my family. Another thing of that is, we stopped and looked at a guy yesterday in his office. He had one award from like 1989. <laughs> no pictures. I don't care if he's got a dog, if he's got a girlfriend, if he's got four kids. But I think you should have something in your office that kind of shows that you're a real person. So when they're sitting there and they're waiting for you, it's like, oh, they're a dog lover. Oh, she's always with her, you know, her nieces and nephews. Or uh, oh, uh, you know, the, him and his girlfriend look like they go on fun adventures. Make yourself a real person that's interactable and engageable. Yeah. Let me take another question, maybe from this side. Who's got a question? Go ahead, Justin. What do you ask for referrals? You know, what's funny is I ask for referrals in my thank you card and my follow-up postcards, but I have gotten to the point, like what Jonathan's trying to take you all to, that I carry abundance that people want to share with me because it's such a great ex experience that I don't even need to ask, they want to give. And that's, you know, 18 years in the business, I shouldn't be at that point. But you give so much that you don't even need to ask. You want to give, and then you've got those pictures of your family, and even vacations. People want to be a part of your adventure. They want to be a part of your story. They want your story to grow because you've taken such good care of them. There you go. Yeah, so that's that obligation, right? People feel when you've added that much value, they feel obligated to help you, and they want to help you grow your business. Everybody, this is Noel Walsh. Thanks, Mark.